This is a brief introduction to CPE 233. Most of this information is in the syllabus, and essentially this is the most important information from the syllabus. There is other information in the syllabus. So the, we'll say the courseware for this course is essentially the books and the hardware, and the books are all posted on Canvas. These were primarily written by me and maybe some other people also. Uh, particularly the lab manual is something that I update quite often so I, I ask before you do every experiment to download the latest version of the lab manual. So essentially the, the things I do to it are essentially make improvements on it when uh, someone points out a problem so be sure to download the latest manual. The uh, hardware is the digital three base digital basis three board uh, this is essentially required. You need it for the first experiment, and then uh, for experiments two, three, and four, you don't need it, but then you need it for the rest of the course. So if you can't afford one or you don't have one, the EE department says they have some. Um, it's uh, I've never had, to the best of my knowledge, a student try to get a hold of one of those boards, but uh, by all means, ask about it. I don't have the boards. I would ask Dale Dolan, who is the EE department chair for all, for all intents and purposes. So the homework in this class is essentially, it's kind of sort of assigned. It's just do all the problems. Uh, so certainly uh, it's because you don't have to submit it, you don't really need to do all the problems. You need to do as many problems as you feel you need to do to learn the course material. Uh, there's just absolutely tons of example problems out there now after teaching this course several times. Uh, there's more every quarter. There's four quarters worth of quizzes. So that's like close to 40 quizzes, five or six questions each. There's a ton of questions. So uh, by all means, these questions represent everything I know about the course and the topics associated with the course. Read them all. All the solutions are there also, so it's not a big deal. The grading is, is essentially there's Two final exams, there's quizzes, and there's experiments. So there's a lecture final, which is solved problems, a lab final, which is short answer problems, and there's the experiments. So the experiments are not weighted that high. Um, I, I would really like you to submit them on time and high quality. Uh, don't, don't wing it. it. Just do a good job on these. There's weekly quizzes uh, because of the, the way I am doing the, the assessment in this class, the, the weekly quizzes are essentially optional. So essentially what you'll see in the lecture is, is that you, you have two options and one of the options doesn't include the quizzes. So it's up to you whether you want to take the quizzes. The, the, the issue is if you don't take the quizzes, the final exams are, are hard, have higher weighting and so it puts a lot of pressure on the uh, last week of the course, which shouldn't be a big deal because I will tell you if you know what's going on in the course, the final exams are never that big a deal. So I do post a minimum minimum performance based on a grade. So you got to do all the experiments to get an A. If you miss one experiment, the greatest grade you can get is A minus, and it and it goes downward. That's listed in the syllabus. Uh, the course is essentially a flipped course. All the lectures are pre-recorded. I, I will not do live Zoom lectures. Um, additionally, all the material that's in the lectures, or probably 98% of it, is from the various, various texts. So, if you, I mean, if you don't like listening to lectures, everything I know is in those texts. The lectures are based on the texts. The class time starts 10 minutes after the hour. Uh, typically, I, I mean, not typically, I'm always there for the entire, you know, two plus hours or hour and 50 minutes or whatever, whatever it is. You're, is. I'm there, drop in, ask questions. Uh, there's also two or three TAs for the course. Uh, we're st I'm still working that out as of today. This is actually Friday of the week before. Uh, they'll get their um, office hours announced and additionally there's the discord server which uh, a lot of people used last quarter I, I actually uh, monitored it quite closely and when there's a questions I answer the questions so the the lab submissions are always 
an issue. So they're not lab reports or lab submissions. Lab reports means, you know, objectives and conclusions, all that stuff. I don't, I don't really have time for that uh, to grade that. Unfortunately, uh, long-standing disagreement with the EE department on that one. Um, I do all the grading, so essentially, I'm not going to, not going to deal with really poor quality lab submissions. So, on in the lab manuals, there's a description of what I think a good lab submission is. It's, it, I know it's like two pages, but all the stuff makes sense. Most importantly, whatever you did in CP133 may not be adequate in in CP233. So read over what uh, the kind of the guidelines in the lab activity manual, which is listed on Canvas. So lab, remember the lab submissions, not lab reports. Uh, possible scores are out of 20, zero. If you don't turn it in one, if you turn in total junk, and then I'll, after that, it's, you know, essentially it's 14 through 20, which is essentially a C through an A on that one. So turn in good stuff. It makes it really easy to grade, and it's um, it shows me that you've learned the material, and that's what I'm that's what I'm looking at here. Certainly, if you submit stuff early, um, you, I'll grade it, and you you can resubmit it. But that's like I said, it's only if you submit it early, and I can get it back to you. Generally speaking, turnaround time for grading is pretty fast. You don't have to worry about that. So cheating, yep. Uh, this all sucks, but I ask you, please don't cheat. Um, I do take it personally, and that creates a bias that you simply just don't want to deal with. <laughs> you know, I'm still I'm still dealing with the cheating that went on last quarter. I'm not really pleased with that one. Uh, keep in mind that I do the grading, and I'm not as dumb as I seem. Number one, number two is generally people who cheat are just really bad cheaters, really bad. I don't, don't want to get into details on that one, but. So I'll, additionally, some people take this class credit, no credit, and, and it was something I supported initially, but now it's, I, I just, I think it be, has become problematic. Look, it's, it's not, it's, this is about learning. It's not about a GPA. I had many students say, oh, yep, I'm going to take it credit, no credit, because I don't want it to hurt my GPA. And it's like, well, or whatever. What I found is people take credit, no credit, and they use that as an excuse to not do as good in the course. And this this means, you know, it's D for done, but a D is not a passing grade if you take take it credit, no credit. And so you got to be really careful with that. So d despite what you may have heard this quarter, I will absolutely enforce deadlines, experiment deadlines. The quizzes last quarter pretty much unlimited time but I am going to make those time limited this quarter. And also, I think most likely I am going to enforce, you have to take the quizzes during class time. That may change. I, I'm still thinking about that. So the big mystery to me is uh, what if so, so many students have a problem with my version of CP233? I, I don't know. I, it could be because I suck, I just don't know. You know, CP, my, one of my issues is CPE typically does not prepare students for CP233. I know some teachers don't have you do any designs in 133. Um, what I've heard is they give you the designs, and I think this is, you know, it's digital design, that's the course. It's not digital, here's your design, implement it in, v, in uh, Verilog. So also additionally, uh, the lots of people have not used the simulator and or don't know how to use the simulator. And the simulator is your friend that's going to help you get complex circuits working. <clears throat> I think also a lot, a lot of people are are used to getting by with in courses that uh, without actually knowing the course material, like memorize, memorizing solutions or particularly having old people's work. I, I write new questions for every quiz and every exam so having old people's work ain't gonna fly it's it's if you try that it, you're gonna get hurt by that so don't, don't do that um, also I've noticed that students simply some students simply don't like anything that looks like programming and that means this, this class in general is programming the computer programming but it's also works with Verilog which is looks like programming but not 
my last comment here this course is very doable but you're not going to wing it it's you just can't wing this course you got to put the time into it uh, i don't think the course material is complicated but it uh, gets kind of complex because there's so much material so the notion of assembly language programming and computer architecture is just like you know huge topics in and of themselves and we have 10 weeks to do it so uh, overall success in this course uh, essentially you need to take all the ideas all these simple ideas uh, and make them work together fit them together in a way that makes sense to you and so that you know the course material